Hi students, uh, this lecture will focus on how to analyze a company, which is a stock valuation financial analyst job. The first entry job that you will have is financial analyst. And the question, what is that financial analyst? Well, financial analyst, their job is to analyze a company. How to analyze a company? We're gonna do five models. We're gonna analyze five models. One is analyst recommendation, ratio evaluation, which is focusing forward PE. Gap M model, DDM, discounted, dividend discounted model, and they call it DDM, and DCF cash flow. These are the models that we're gonna analyze. In this lecture, I will go through the top three models, and then I will go thoroughly through these three, and then we go to empirical side, we talk with theory side, the empirical side, back to theory and back empirical, back and forth, so you understand it, the three models, and then you pick a company, your homework, and to do this, replicate the same work, but for a different company. In the future lectures, we're gonna do dividend DDM and DCF, but today only we're gonna focus on the top three. The first one is analyst recommendation. So what is that analyst recommendation? Uh, every company has, um, like for example, Apple, has a lot of uh, financial analysts analysts that analyze the company and they are in JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, all of those. So every analyst will give a value from one to five. One in Yahoo Finance is different than Bloomberg. In Yahoo Finance, one is a strong buy. Five is a strong sell. So for Apple, for example, the average is two. That means buy. It's closer to the strong buy, good. Far from strong sale, good. So that means it's three is the average, like the S&P is a three, is a benchmark. So you are below the three. So that's in, a Bloom, in a Yahoo Finance, one to five. One is a strong buy, five strong sale. And Bloomberg is different. And we're gonna follow, follow Bloomberg. Bloomberg is one is strong sale, five is a strong buy. So one is a strong sale. And five is a strong buy. So every analyst give a number, like I am from JP Morgan, they give two, some people from Morgan Stanley four, some people five, some people five, one, some people three, and so on. The average, the average analyst recommendation is the one what we're gonna analyze. And suppose the average for Apple was four. Remember in Yahoo Finance, it was two. To converge from Yahoo Finance to, to uh, Bloomberg, and we use Bloomberg from, all what you have to do is six minus whatever the number in Yahoo Finance. So suppose in Bloomberg, the average analyst recommendation is four. Here we go, from Yahoo Finance to Bloomberg. All what you have to do is six minus the ANR. In this case, six minus two, which is equal four. From where I got the two, this is the two I got here from Yahoo Finance is two. That means in Bloomberg, they reverse the scale. All oh, what you have to do is six minus two, that will be four. And we go with Bloomberg. So then Bloomberg is gonna be four. So you use this four, you divide it by three. From where the three comes, The three is the average, which is hold, like the S&P. So you divide it by three, and this is gonna be above one. That means the analyst recommendation is expecting to do better than the S&P. Then you say, okay, by how much? Well, tell me how much S&P we expect, and I want in this class everybody to assume the S&P return for the next 12 months is 10%. By the way, stock valuation for the next month, next 12, 12 months. Uh, valuation for the next 12 months, and we use uh, five models. Good, so I'm happy now. Okay, I got, you go to Bloomberg, you do ANR. If you go to Bloomberg, you do ANR, like use company Apple and then ANR, then they will give you the number here it's supposed to be four. If the market is gonna go 10% next year, then four divided by three, XG, how much growth of the company price 
X divided by three, X is in this case four, so four divided by three multiplied by 10%, that will be 13%. Then the future price is what's the price of Apple today? Multiply one plus XG, which is, we just calculated that here, and that will be 13% and that will be uh, uh, the price of Apple. Now, oh, what you need to know is the price of Apple, suppose the price of Apple is currently, how much the price of Apple currently? 151.62, that's the price of Apple. Okay, so will you put 151? That's 151, just 151 is enough. And you put this 151, multiply by this, you get the price of Apple. Now, I don't like to, to calculate with my hand. You have an Excel file also, or what you have to do, is analyst recommendation. So all that you have to do is to report the number of Apple, which is four in this case, three, just don't touch it, to say insert. That means this is a number that you have to add. Oh no, keep it. I mean this one, add. And then you have to also add the number of the price of Apple. In this case, 151. Well, 151, and that's the analyst recommendation for. Then you go to analyst recommendation, boom. The expected price for Apple will be 173.4. Okay, that's the price of Apple. 12 months from now, we expect the price of Apple to go from 151 till uh, 173. That's model number one. Again, what we do, that's a theory. We go to the empirical here, and you will have the Excel file. You put the parameters here, you get the results here, okay? The second model is the ratios. Let's go to the theory and then talk about the empirical. Ratio valuation. This model is a lot of used by uh, asset price uh, fund managers and stock uh, analysts, for, uh, financial analysts. And it's simple. It says, What's the current PE ratio? What's the PE ratio? Is it the price divided by the earning? We have a lecture, we talked about that, and it reflects how much investors are willing to pay price for every dollar earnings. So the PE ratio, suppose if a company PE ratio is 15, the question is what's the future forward PE ratio? Well, we need to do, and then the formula is the current PE divided by forward PE. So if the forward PE is lower, it's good, that means Suppose the current PE is 15, right? If the forward PE is ratio is 10, that means the earnings, the earnings, let me break it in green, is gonna go a lot high. So P divided by a lot of high, the PE ratio will go from 15 to 10 because P divided by uh, E. When the E goes a lot up, then the ratio will go down. So that will make it, the forward PE to be, for example, 10, for example. Then you multiply the price, but multiply by current PE divided by forward PE. In this case, uh, 151 multiplied by the current PE divided by forward PE. Let's see what's the current PE and forward PE. For Apple, the current PE is a 25.44. Now the forward PE, I think we can have it here. I will see if we can. Financials. Analysis. I didn't know what's, uh, I can have it in, in Bloomberg, 
for PE, but what I do, I go to Yahoo Finance in my smartphone. You select the company. In this case, Apple, AAPL. And there is something here in the pink, say show all key statistics. So it should be in the statistics, but I cannot see it here. Here we go, I found it here. Four PE is at 2597. Four PE 2597. Summary, the current PE is at 2544. So you go here, current PE 2544, the forward PE, Twenty-five ninety-seven. So that means actually the earning will go down, and then how much the price of Apple will be in this case? Well, what you have to do is just go here, go to the key parameters, and then forward PE is it forward price earning ratio and the current earning ratio, and the current is twenty-five forty-four twenty-five ninety-seven. 2597. Uh, Here is right, 2544. Once you put these data numbers, you go here to the ratios, boom. That's a future price for Apple, 15311. So you put the numbers and it would be 153.11, which is no change in the price of Apple. So we went through two models, analyst recommendation, Ratio valuation, and we go to the Excel. We did, we put the numbers here. I teach you the theory in the, in the PowerPoints. And then once you put the numbers here for this model, insert and insert, let's put the yellow here. Boom, you go here, boom, you get the price, you're done. The third model is cap M model, and we're done. The cap M model is a model by a sharp who get no price. The reason he get a no price because it's a simple model. He say he uh, maps risk to return, high risk, high return. And he introduced something called beta. And he said uh, the beta reflect the riskiness of the company. And he constructed that the S&P as a benchmark index, the beta is one. And if a company has above one beta, risk, that means the company is riskier than the S&P, but if it's below one, that means less risky than the S&P. In this case, we're gonna continue with Apple. Uh, the price of Apple, as of now, uh, the beta for Apple 1.3. 1.3, that means Apple is riskier than the market by 30%, because 1.3. If you go to Walmart, which is WMT, the ticker for Walmart, if you click on Walmart, and you can see the beta for Walmart, is 49.49. That means Walmart is much less riskier than the index. So Sharp said, if you tell me how much a company's risk, I can tell you what is expected the price. So in this case, uh, Apple uh, beta is 1.3. If the benchmark equal one, and this is S&P by construction, and let me put that in green. So Apple is a 30% riskier than the market. Good. So to solve this model, we need RM. We need to know how much the market return. In this case, we assume that in the first model, it's 10%. So we're going to go all the way, all the time with the 10% market risk. And then we need to know the risk-free bond. In this case, in this class, is a 5%. And that's set by the Federal Reserve. We, we didn't control it. This is an assumption, RM. RF by the Federal Reserve, 5%. And then you need to put the price of Apple, in this case, 151. And here we have to have it 5%. So we go to the formula. Well, the formula is RG, the return for Apple equal RF, which is in this case, 5%. Plus 1.3 is the beta for Apple. Multiply by RM minus RF. RM minus RF, we call it risk premium. They call it risk premium, which is a market return minus the bond rate return, and that's risk premium. Uh, the difference is risk premium. And, and in this case, if we go with that, then the return will be for Apple 
that much. And the RG is the expected return based on cap M model. But this is a discount factor. You took a lot of classes with us, 3,500 FCNE, 3,500. This is a discount factor for a company. When somebody asks you what's a discount factor, this is the way we calculate the discount factor for Apple. So in this case, the discount factor for Apple is this number. But we care about the future price for Apple. Well, the future price of Apple is the price of Apple multiplied by R1 plus RG. In this case, 151. Multiply by this, and that will be the price of Apple. I didn't want to need, I didn't need to calculate this. I'm going to go to Excel. And I'm going to the key parameter. Remember, the RF is 5% fixed by the Federal Reserve. So you didn't insert that. 5% for all companies for all for this semester. This is a number you need to insert. How much the uh, beta for Apple. And market projected return is 0.10%. That's class assumption. I make this assumption and you should make it. If you feel that's not a good assumption, that's fine, change it. But I assume for this class, for this semester, 10% is great. Once you put these numbers, they basically all what you have to put in the beta, that boom, you're done. This is the price of Apple, 170.59. Uh, done. So I'm basically done with all the one I teach you for today. Again, we have a three models, analyst recommendation, a ratio valuation, and cap in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put underline. We cover this three. In our future lectures, we're going to go DDM and DCF. DCF, it's a discount, uh, discounted cash flow. Uh, this is very account accounting type model, so you will have videos, but DDM, also, we'll have videos, but also we'll have videos, but not by me, by somebody else. I find it in YouTube, and 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 and, and that person has a great graphics better than what I have. I can do so. We're gonna use his videos, but this one I will do it by myself, a, a separate video. So we cover three models. Before we go, I just want to give you a test. What next? To teach these two models, but before we go there, notice that. Based on this model, what we expect the price of Apple to be 170.59. Based on this model, the price of Apple 153. Based on this model, the price of Apple 173. So you have a three different prices. Every model gives you a different price. So you are you said, Joseph, then what, what is it? Which one I should use? Well, you're going to choose based on weight. You're going to weight all these three models. We have another two, so we need to add model four and five. But once we add them, then we have a five models. Just want to give you a test. What next? You have a five models. Every model gives you different price. Then we're going to have a weight. You're going to put weight for each model. I will explain how much weight to put for every model and why. And then uh, you get the projected price looking at five different models. Then we do sensitivity analysis to make sure that our recommendation to buy or sell the stock or hold uh, is making sense. I am done for today. So what you're going to go, I want you to go to Canvas and, and work on this assignment. So you will watch this video. So I'll insert the video. You have the PowerPoint and the Excel. And then I want you to replicate my work with a video. You have to produce a video with an Excel showing me what you've done. So, so what you have to do is a video where you do a same analysis, but a different, for a different company. Thank you so much. And you have everything to replicate the work for a different company than Apple. I hope you enjoy the class. Thank you so much.